The morning of June 6, 1994, dawned with a light drizzle over the city of Xi'an, one of the oldest and most iconic cities in China. At that hour, as traffic began to clog the avenues, Xianyang Airport was preparing for a new day of operations. 146 passengers were getting ready to board a domestic flight southbound to the city of Guangzhou, a route many knew by heart, expected to last just over two hours. No one imagined that this flight, identified as China Northwest Airlines 2303, would mark a turning point in Chinese civil aviation. What began as a simple routine transfer would become one of the darkest days in the history of aviation in the Asian giant. June 6, 1994, Xi'an Xianyang International Airport, Shanxi, China. It's 7.45 in the morning, and here, China Northwest Airlines Flight 2303 is beginning to board its passengers. Flight 2303 was scheduled to depart from Xi'an Xianyang International Airport in the heart of Shanxi Province, with its final destination being Guangzhou Baiyun Airport in Guangdong Province. It was a regular route connecting two key economic hubs, the historic north and the rapidly growing industrial south of China. The journey would cover approximately 1,200 kilometers heading southeast, crossing mountainous terrain, vast agricultural plains, and densely populated areas. Under normal conditions, the trip was expected to last about 2 hours and 15 minutes. The crew anticipated a smooth flight, although takeoff would occur under a cloudy sky with intermittent drizzle, typical of the rainy season in Xi'an. The aircraft assigned to the flight was a Tupolev Tu-154M, registration B2610, a Soviet-designed trije widely used in China during the 1980s and 1990s. The plane had been manufactured in 1986 by the Kuibyshev plant and was equipped with three Soloviev engines, known for their power. This Tu-154M had logged over 12,500 flight hours and more than 6,600 cycles. High numbers, but still within operational limits. It had been transferred from the former Civil Aviation Administration of China to China Northwest Airlines in 1988. Following the restructuring of the aviation sector, China Northwest Airlines was one of the carriers created after the breakup of the CAAC in the late 1980s. It primarily operated regional and domestic routes out of Xi'an, with a fleet mostly composed of Soviet-built aircraft. At the time, Chinese civil aviation was undergoing rapid expansion, but also faced significant challenges in infrastructure and technical maintenance. The pressure to cover more routes with limited resources led some airlines to outsource certain maintenance services and occasionally operate with poorly standardized procedures. The cockpit was led by Captain Li Gangqiang, an experienced pilot with several years of service on domestic routes. At his side was second captain Xin Tiankai and first officer Yang Min. Also present in the cockpit were pilot Zhang Nanjing and flight engineer Kong Yufa, completing a large technical crew, as was typical for Soviet aircraft of that era. In the passenger cabin, Nine cabin crew members were responsible for onboard service and attending to the passengers on this flight. The atmosphere before boarding was calm, despite the drizzle and gray skies. On board were 146 passengers, the majority, 133, being Chinese citizens. However, the flight had an unusually international profile for a domestic route. Passengers also came from Italy, the United States, France, Russia, Canada, South Korea, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Vietnam. This diversity of nationalities reflected China's gradual opening during those years, amid a booming economy following Deng Xiaoping's reforms. In total, 160 people were on board the Tupolev.
At 8.13 a.m., Flight 2303 began its takeoff roll from Xi'an. Raindrops slid down the Tupolev's windshield as the three Soloviev engines roared with their distinctive deep sound. They lifted off without issue and began their journey towards southern China. On board, passengers felt the thrust of the climb. Some settled in, while others looked out the windows at the city fading behind them, wrapped in a gray haze. In the cockpit, Captain Lee and his crew began standard departure procedures. However, just 24 seconds after takeoff, something caught their attention. The aircraft appeared to float abnormally, not responding firmly to the controls. A strange hum could be heard, like a metallic vibration running through the structure. The captain slightly reduced power, trying to stabilize the aircraft. The TU-154 maintained a speed of around 400 kilometers per hour, but the instruments showed slight heading oscillations. Three minutes later, the plane flew over the city of Xi'an and turned southeast. At 8.16, the pilots reported to air traffic control that they were unable to maintain the assigned heading and were experiencing deviations of 20 to 30 degrees. Despite this, they continued their climb. A minute later, at 8.17, the captain decided to engage the autopilot, believing the system could stabilize the flight. At that moment, a hidden error in the systems came to life. Instead of correcting the heading, the autopilot abruptly turned the aircraft to the right, the cockpit filled with alarms. The pilots tried to counter the turn using the rudder pedals and control column, but the aircraft responded erratically. Aerodynamic forces increased violently. At 8.22, the stall warning sounded, even though the aircraft was still moving at over 200 knots. The TU-154 entered a violent lateral roll, tilting first to the right and then to the left with movements exceeding the aircraft's structural limits. Inside, passengers screamed, masks and objects were torn from overhead compartments. The engines remained at full thrust as the fuselage began to experience extreme stress. In just 12 seconds, the aircraft plunged from 4,600 feet to below 2,900, reaching speeds close to 410 knots. In the outskirts of Suitu, in the Mingyu region, witnesses saw a flash and heard a deafening boom. The aircraft, subjected to unbearable loads, broke apart in midair. The impact was devastating. There were no survivors among the 160 people on board. It was the deadliest air accident in mainland China's history up to that point. The bodies were recovered and cataloged throughout the day under strict forensic coordination. The tragedy shocked the entire nation and sparked an intense debate over air safety. What had happened? What problem did the aircraft have that made it uncontrollable for the pilots? When rescue teams and units from the People's Liberation Army arrived at the scene, the sight was overwhelming. The wreckage of the Tupolev Tu-154M was scattered over nearly 30 kilometers, covering villages, wheat fields, and rice paddies. The extent of the debris clearly indicated that the aircraft had disintegrated mid-air before impact. There were no signs of an explosion or pre-impact fire. Everything pointed to a catastrophic structural failure. For days, hundreds of technicians and investigators combed the area, marking each recovered part. The smallest fragments, fuselage pieces, seats, electrical panels, were stored in makeshift hangars. The goal was to reconstruct the failure sequence, piece by piece, to understand why an aircraft that had taken off normally had broken apart in flight. 
The investigation team from China's Civil Aviation Ministry, supported by Russian engineers familiar with the TU-154, focused their attention on the flight control system. In the wreckage of the technical compartment, they found a disturbing anomaly. The autopilot cables and connectors didn't match the original manufacturer's layout. After comparing them with diagrams provided by the Kuybyshev plant, they confirmed the unthinkable. During a previous maintenance operation carried out the night before, technicians had swapped the autopilot's control channels. The pitch channel, which controls the aircraft's climb and descent, had been connected to the roll channel, responsible for lateral banking. Conversely, the roll channel had been linked to the pitch control. In practical terms, this meant that when the autopilot tried to climb, the aircraft banked, and when it tried to turn, the aircraft suddenly ascended or descended. An error invisible to the eye, yet enough to generate a cross-axis oscillation that was impossible to control. Analysis of the metal deformation on the fuselage confirmed that the aircraft had been subjected to lateral forces 250% above its design tolerance. At the moment the crew activated the autopilot, the system began issuing contradictory commands, entering a sort of internal war between control channels. Each correction attempt triggered an even more violent motion until the fuselage finally gave way under the strain. Engineers also discovered that the maintenance work hadn't been performed at a certified facility. The repair had been urgently assigned to a local shop not approved by the CAAC, and no technical supervisor had signed off on the job. Worse yet, no test flight or ground verification of the autopilot system had been conducted. Steps that could have exposed the error that the maintenance records were incomplete and lacked any verifiable signatures. During the subsequent interviews, inspectors determined that the technicians who had performed the task were not qualified to work on the TU-154M's autopilot systems and that the airline's internal control procedures were inadequate. In other words, the failure was not an individual oversight, but the result of a chain of structural negligence within a rapidly expanding yet poorly regulated industry. Analysis of communications with air traffic control showed that the crew acted correctly and professionally. The pilots identified the aircraft's abnormal behavior and followed the expected procedures. They attempted to stabilize it manually and, when unsuccessful, engaged the autopilot in search of system assistance. What they didn't know was that this action, logical and necessary in any other case, triggered the fatal malfunction. Investigators were unanimous. There was no human error in the cockpit. The final report, released months later, concluded that the probable cause of the accident was a mechanical failure caused by incorrect maintenance performed at a non-certified facility, combined with a lack of proper oversight by aviation authorities. The document firmly stated that this was not an isolated incident, but a symptom of a systemic deterioration in the safety culture of Chinese civil aviation in the 1990s. The findings rocked the industry. An immediate inspection was ordered for over 200 Soviet-made aircraft still in operation in the country, especially those equipped with similar autopilot systems. New regulations were implemented requiring verification of all control channels after every maintenance procedure and the licenses of several independent repair shops were revoked. But why did the pilots notice that the controls didn't feel normal even in manual flight mode? In the TU-154M, the autopilot is integrated with the Automatic Flight Control System, AFCS. Even when the autopilot is switched off, the system's amplifiers and actuators remain physically connected to the control chain. If any of those channels are miswired or improperly centered, they can introduce resistance or parasitic signals into the controls. During the initial climb and manual flight, the pilots noticed that the controls felt heavy and that the aircraft seemed to float. This is stated verbatim in the Chinese report. That sensation occurred because the servo in the autopilot's miswired channel was incorrectly trying to compensate for pitch movements, introducing small opposing forces into the controls. The aircraft entered slight attitude oscillations that didn't correspond to the pilot's inputs. As a result, there was a sense of elastic or delayed control, where the aircraft responded slowly 
or with minor overcorrections. In other words, even in manual mode, the faulty system was physically interfering with the control column and ailerons. It wasn't a complete failure, but enough to make the aircraft feel odd or unstable during the climb. Following this investigation, and in an unprecedented move, the Chinese government decided to progressively retire all Tupolev Tu-154s from civil service, deeming their technical complexity and reliance on external maintenance an unacceptable risk. Over time, the case of Flight 2303 became a mandatory reference in Chinese aviation academies, a reminder of how a single reversed connection in a system can trigger a national tragedy. The accident exposed not only a mechanical failure, but also a deep fracture in safety management. And that lesson changed Chinese aviation forever. The government imposed new certification and oversight rules for maintenance facilities, and China Northwest Airlines was placed under direct supervision. Years later, in 2003, the airline was merged into China Eastern Airlines, leaving its name behind. Although the flight number 2303 continued to be used on the same route, as a silent reminder. With the case of Flight 2303, we come to understand just how much aviation depends on human precision. It wasn't a storm, a structural failure, or a desperate decision in the cockpit. It was a small wiring error, almost invisible, made just hours before takeoff. A failure that turned a routine flight into a tragedy. In aviation, every cable, every screw, and every signature on a report carries immense weight. Because in the end, for those in the air, trust is built on the ground. Thanks for making it to the end, friends. Before I go, I want to welcome the new member of the channel, Nick Green. Thanks for the support, my friend. See you next Friday with a brand new video.